Welcome back to Last Night I Watched. I'm your host, Carlos. With me today, I got my buddy Ian. How's it going, Ian? Hey, Carlos. It's going good. Thank you for having me, as always. Good to have you, dude. And I also got Mark here. What's up, Mark? Not much. I'm feeling groovy. Heck yeah. We actually just got out of the theater today. Um, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once just came out I think yesterday. So we had to immediately hop in the theaters and check it out. I'm another version of one from another universe. I'm here because we need your help. Very busy today. Uh, so time to help you. Across the multiverse, I've seen thousands of Evelyns. You can access all their memories, their emotions, even their skills. There's a great evil spreading throughout the many verses. And you. Maybe your only chance of stopping it. Don't make me fight you. I am really good. I don't believe you. It's directed by, they go by the Daniels, but it's two dudes, uh, Daniel Kwan and Daniel Schreiner. This film stars Michelle Yeoh as Evelyn Wang, Stephanie Zhu as Joy, uh, surprisingly, uh, Kei-Hu Kwan as uh, the husband Waymond. He's actually uh, played short round in the original Indiana uh, Jones Data films. Data and the Goonies. Yeah, really cool to see him. Yeah. And then you also have James Hong in there and Jamie Lee Curtis. So it's a pretty great cast. Um, all four of those people are in like some of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. Which is really cool. So, Mark, what do you think about this movie? Everything, everywhere, all at once. I'll tell you what. I, I had some reservations. It is not really my kind of movie. Last week when you told me that this is what's going to happen with the three of us today i uh i kind of dreaded it <laughs> and so and i went on youtube and i really couldn't find a lot on it you know previews and that kind of stuff you know people talking about it a little bit didn't help me with the plot and so went today kind of trudged in there it's like oh my god two hours of my life i'm not going to get back and i liked i almost love it it was such a cool movie it um it it explained things to me as it went it wasn't it didn't leave me guessing and having to put this puzzle together because again like i've said you know i don't i almost like to be force fed you know, or you know fed it i don't i don't like to have to sit there and think my way through a movie and uh this was not that way at all um the like you said earlier the cast is incredible almost everybody that popped up on the screen i recognized from a, from another movie at one time uh you mentioned uh james hong the 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 father i mean he's been in almost 500 Holy movies crap. or yeah. tv specials or <clears throat> something like that i mean the, the cat's been around forever yeah. so yep i thoroughly enjoyed it i would recommend it to anybody out there that has you know even if you have just a teeny tiny bit of a doubt take the leap because it, it it's a good movie it's a really cool movie heck yeah that's what i'm saying yeah Mark. yeah uh, Ian, what'd you think about this one? Yeah, I really liked it too. Uh, I remember, I think I I saw um, a preview for it before the new Spider Man. I want to say, and it's funny because they're similar in the sense that you know universes colliding and whatnot. And at first, I was like, "Wow, that looks really crazy!" Like, just you know, it's it's a I the I'm gonna overuse this word. I've been saying it ever since we got out of the theater. It, it's a, it's am- ambitious. It's very it's a very ambitious idea. To the point where, you know, I was like, I don't know if that's going to work and actually make sense and be coherent enough to actually follow along. Because, Mark, what you said, like, you like being force fed. Really, I do, too. You know, I do also like to think, but at the same time, it's nice. It is also nice to just be told a simple story. You know, don't meander on things. Just, you know, get in there, chew your shit and get out. And uh, this movie, there's so much shit going on, but it was just so well done <clears throat> it was just entertaining the movie's like what two and a half hours long mm-hmm. and uh really they 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 really didn't waste any time at all it was just very just, yeah just very well done very it was like it was good action a lot of um funny stuff happened you know we were laughing there was really some badass moments michelle yo was really badass 
she always has. I mean, I told you she's in one of my favorite James Bond movies. And she was, um, I don't remember, because I haven't seen it in like 20 years, but I remember Crouching Tiger, Dra- Hidden Dragon being very, um, what do you call it, uh, good in, in the fighting style. And yeah, it also was heartfelt too. It was like everything. It was like a drama, comedy, action. It was like everything. It was awesome it was how like, much they fit in there. Yeah, exactly. It was like, holy shit. Like, this is insane. And um, yeah, I was I was very impressed. So, yeah. What did you think of it, Carlos? Oh, man, guys. I've been... I remember watching the preview, like, around the time Spider-Man came out, and I was like, oh, that looks really interesting. There's googly eyes and yeah, right. all kinds of weird stuff. There's a lot of cool lights going on. Um, and I've been hearing a lot of good reviews. People are saying it's one of the best movies I've ever seen. I kind of got to agree. This might be one of the best movies I've ever watched, in a long time, at least. Yeah. Um. The performances were amazing. Michelle Yeoh killed it in yeah, this one. Yeah. It was cool seeing the actor who played Short Round, uh, yeah. Kehu Kwan. Yeah, what yeah. the heck? He was surprisingly really yeah. good too. Yeah. The whole cast did amazing. Yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis, the daughter, Stephanie Zhu. Yeah. Um, like you're saying, there was a big comedy aspect in there. Yeah. I was laughing at one moment, and yeah. then the next, I'm like tearing up yeah. because of how emotional this exactly. film is uh, involving family and yeah. family values. Um, it's a very real movie in a way, even though it has to do with um, interdimensional travel, it still feels so real because um, these guys, Dan, the two Daniels, they don't waste a single space in the frame. You can see uh, in their home, um, just clutter all over the house, p- family portraits, um, it, then you go over to like the IRS office and there's trophies in the background telling a story. <laughs> there's cat photos telling a story about Jamie Lee Curtis's character. Right. Yeah. There's great action sequences in this one. Uh, I, there was one involving a fanny pack. <laughs> at a certain yeah. Point. There was one involving a dog. Speaking of the, the, oh, yeah. yeah. Jenny Slate uses her dog as a weapon. Hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Just very creative. Oh, that's another thing is the soundtrack. It wasn't too overbearing, but it was very good. It had good pacing. You know, when it was an action scene, it was it cranked up. When it was um, doing slow motion, there was, um, I believe, Jamie Lee Curtis's theme was um, like a Beethoven's Nocturnal something. Okay. I, it sounded a lot okay. like one of those Beethoven yeah, okay. min- Moonlight Sonatas or something. Right, yeah. And it would slow down in the middle of the action for a slow-mo scene, and all you can hear is this really slow piano. Doom, doom, doom. It was so good. Um, yeah, goofy, goofy as hell. And Oh, that's another thing is these directors, the Daniels, their previous movie was The Swiss Army Man. When you told me that, I was like, that makes so much sense. Yeah, <laughs> with uh, starring Daniel Radcliffe, where he plays a dead body the whole movie. There's a lot of fart humor in that one as well, too. Yeah. But, oh, man, they they smashed this one out of the park, I'll yeah. tell you. This one's an instant buy for me. Yeah. And um, another thing that we can also say is the editing was insane. I do not want to <laughs> edit a film like this. That has to be a nightmare. But it came out beautiful. Yeah. Can't say enough good things about this one. Yeah. And um, I told you guys, because I'm such a, you know... I I look probably too much into things and the whole time I'm noticing the aspect ratio kept changing. Right. It would um go from what I presume to be 185 to 1, which is wide, to narrow 133 137 and it all kind of then it it would go out to um it would get out to um uh black bars on the top, so I presume that was 235 to 1. And I was kind of bummed because we were I already told you guys this, but we were watching it in the theater on a 21 by nine screen when 21 by nine is two thirty five to one. So I thought it would have been cool if they had just widened it out. So there wouldn't have been black bars on the top for the two thirty five to one scenes. But I think that's just the way they formatted it. The filmmakers, they probably think that most people are going to stream this. Most people have 16 by nine screens. So, you know, they wouldn't have mattered for the home, the home viewers, but it was still cool though. You know, I thought it was really neat to do that. Like kind of, you know, one universe is a certain aspect ratio. One, like, I think a lot of the flashbacks were um, the narrow one. And then as the progressed, they would get wider and wider, from what I remember, at least. Yeah. I thought that was a really neat touch. Very, um, you know, it's a I, good, I, skillful craft. I think I do remember reading the Daniels talking about this film, and they used 
as many lenses as they could get their hands on okay. to do it. That's and cool. It really comes through. Yeah. Looking like that. Yeah. I think the first action sequence when he's using the fanny pack, it almost seemed like a callback to like a Bruce Lee film because he's using it almost as a nunchuck. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know what aspect ratio Bruce Lee films were. They're predominantly 235 to 1 from what I, from what I, because I have all the ones he did when he was alive. Oh, okay. I think they're all 235 to 1. Because that's the first time that the bars come yes. and they shrink yes. it down. Yes, you Was notice it. to it. match the Bruce Lee? Um, yeah, because you, you you know what I'm, I think I know what you're talking about. You notice the black bars coming down, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you know, oh, shit, we're yeah, getting Yeah, exactly. Things. Like, things are about to get epic. Yeah. yeah. Time to lose some ass. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, and just what you, like, it just, yeah, this, this movie just feels like... Um, you said it was like kind of believable and, and like the, in the sense of like these, this family and everything like Jamie Lee Curtis looks like a legitimate tax auditor yeah. or IRS. Like she looks like if you went to the IRS office, like that looks like a person that would be there auditing okay. your, your uh, taxes and whatnot. Even down to the hand brace. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what like, I thought about was carpal tunnel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, wow, that's just so, yeah, they, they got that perfectly. And, so cool. um, yeah, it was just, it was a really fun time. It was one of the, you know, it's been so far, knock on wood, it's been a good year for At the Movie Theater. Yeah. And this just cements, cements it even further. Let's uh, let's score this one before we start heading into spoilers and really digging in. Okay. You say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. All right. Um, I'll go first right off the bat. Yeah. Five out of five for okay. me, guys. Right yeah, on. this is um, as good as it gets for me. Um, the story was excellent. Um the the visuals were excellent i liked what they were doing with the interdimensional travel it almost felt a little bit like matrix like um, when neo would go oh i know kung fu all of a sudden um great acting great performances the soundtrack was very effective um five out of five guys for me nice what do you think mark i'm gonna marry you man i'm giving it a five it's just i wow i was just i was blown away by it yeah, you know, not what I expected, and I don't like. I said, I mirror you. Every, almost every aspect of the movie was done very well, almost perfectly. Nothing drug. The uh, action scenes were great. I yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but you said mirroring me. Did you guys see all the mirrors yeah. in the beginning? Like a lot yes. of the shots, you could see people behind the yep. main character. Yeah, you know, coming up and yeah, in the little circular circular mirrors mark you you brought up um, when we were walking out of the movie theater that uh the subtitles like are kind of cracked when the mirror cracks yeah that well, was like cool. when, she's doing when they split show. the screen yeah yeah the on the cracked part the subtitles are wonky and yeah they're, they're normal it's, yeah. Just, it's just that kind of stuff all, all the way through it you know yeah. I, I don't know if yeah i guess you would call it attention to detail sure. I, I don't know it's just yeah the little things nuance yeah, nuances yeah, i guess little things yeah, yeah. Yeah, how about you, Ian? I don't see. Oh man, I don't think I can give this a five and out of five right now. I, because you know, I just saw it today. Um, we all saw it today, but I don't know. I don't know. Like uh, the way I word, I can word it is like maybe in the future I can see myself giving it a five out of five after rewatches and whatnot. I think right now I might give it a four out of five. Um. Yeah, just four out of five sounds good to me. I, th- there's not really many things I can take away from it. You know, they it was two and a half hours, which, you know, most of the time I'm like, all right, well, they better, you know, make this uh, worth the two and a half hours. And I think they, I felt like they did in this one. There were maybe some times where I was a little, um, maybe just um, not as interested, but really not enough to, you know, really turn me off to the movie but i think right now i think I, i'm gonna give it a four out of five um yeah and Fair maybe story. maybe someday i could say it's a five out of five but right now I, i'm sitting out a four out of five yeah hey that works and i don't really know why i can't say why i take a whole point off just because um uh he's i don't know it's not it's kind of like mark said this isn't necessarily my kind of movie for the most part i you know I'm more kind of just maybe straight action, straight comedy, drama sometimes. But this uh, one does kind of it, it intermix bl- all of those. Yeah, genres. and it it did blend it all well together. But um, 
Yeah, right now I'll just I'll, I'll just give it a four out of five. Right on. Yeah. Right on. You guys earlier talked about the dude with the backpack. Um, that reminded me of the little girl in um, in uh, the first Tarantino movie of the of the two. Oh, Kill Bill. Uh, Kill Bill. Yeah. Okay. Where she she had the the black or she had the silver chain and she had the ball oh, with the spikes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of the same oh, style of fighting. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what it reminded me of. That's cool. Yeah, definitely. Wait, what guy with the backpack? The fanny pack. Or, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I know what you meant. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, hmm. yeah. And the dog, the chick with the dog. <laughs> yeah, that show was definitely like, the that dog. That shit was hilarious. Oh my god. That okay, shit was hilarious. We should probably do the warning, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Spoiler yeah warning. we're getting into spoiler territory right now. Yeah. All right. Well, that looks like a fourteen out of fifteen on the rankings, oh. guys. <laughs> um nearly perfect. Yeah. Uh but now I think we should start talking spoilers. So if you guys haven't seen this movie yet, head over to the theater right away. We totally recommend you go see this one. Um, on the biggest screen possible. I think Ian probably recommends that the most. Yeah. If you can see it on totally. IMAX even, um, to take full advantage of those aspect ratios. Yeah. Um, but yeah, here's our spoiler uh, part of the show. So let's dig into it. So I think the first thing that I want to talk about, guys, is the comedy aspect of it. Um, I actually pointed it out to Ian when we're sitting at Jamie Lee Curtis's desk. You could see her trophies behind her on her right side. And they're, I think it's like um, uh, IRS agent of the month or something. Yeah, yeah. So it kind of shows what yeah. the Daniels think of uh, the IRS or tax people in general. Because <laughs> I didn't think of that. Because these trophies are in the shape of butt plugs. Yeah, and I that, I was just like, that, that, uh, like, I was like, that, that's not a, no. Like, I knew, like, that's like, that's something you shove up. You stick it up your ass. Like, <laughs> That's not a real trophy, yeah, you know. They were no trophy would be good like size that. too. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I've seen exactly those in something. I don't know what, but I was like, yeah, that's got to be some kind of joke. And it paid off, thankfully. Yeah, because yeah, later on, that's another thing. I guess we should talk about is how she can gain her powers or how she does interdimensional travel. I guess they were trying to explain it that you have to rubber band yourself to another dimension by doing something that you would have done in your past that would change the trajectory of your um, future forever. So, for example, um, her husband, in order to activate his, like, kung fu powers, he has to do something that he would have um, changed to learn kung fu in another one of his lives. So what he does is he eats some chapstick. Yeah, that was good. (laughs) Which probably means, like, as a kid, he probably was really into kung fu movies and would eat chapstick on the playground or something and just (laughs) really liked martial arts. And then he could bring it into the real world and uh start beating the crap out of people but um in order for the enemies at one point to activate their i don't even know is like their super kung fu they were trying to shove those trophies up their ass (laughs) which i wonder if that's the director saying because the directors didn't only direct it they wrote it and um, i'm pretty sure they probably edited it or something but um I, i don't know if they're trying to say something about that type of martial arts is <laughs> those guys like to take it up the ass or something <laughs> and that's how they become so good at it but um I, that was just so hilarious that whole fight sequence the guy's pants are down and it's blurred out i wondered why i wondered why it was blurred out <laughs> that makes it even funnier sometimes oh, okay when, okay when that's a good point or... that's a good point i almost wondered if they had to blur it out because um i don't know if it did it actually show it going up his ass um, I feel like they might have cut away from that. Okay, yeah, we didn't get like a close up of it. Yeah, because didn't he just show up all of a sudden with his powers, you know, and then it's hanging out of his butt? I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean. thought we see him running and he's pantless, right. and he's running and it's he jumps right onto the thing, but maybe it doesn't show it going up his ass. I thought she kicked it out from under him. Oh, you're right. One of the most gorgeous you're right. shots of the film was him running in slow motion trying yeah. to land on it. <laughs> um. But they, um, you know, like you've seen Jackie Chan movies and stuff where there's, there's a gun out there in the middle, you know, and they're kicking it around and fighting and kicking yeah, it back. Right. And they did that with the with the uh, butt plug, and that was so... Yeah. Totally yeah. like a Jackie Chan movie. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, because I was wondering, if they, that's why they blurted it out, because, like, showing it going up his ass, 
<laughs> is like pornographic and that would have got them an NC-17. <laughs> but then it kept blurring. It's just blurring out his dick. You can still see the the thing up his ass. <laughs> so yeah, you maybe you're right. Maybe they just did it. It's just funny. I don't know. Yeah, regardless, regardless, it's still out. fucking funny. I mean, <laughs> God damn, man. That's true. And then another guy has another thing up his ass too. An even bigger trophy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And then to stop him, Michelle Yeoh has to pull him out at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Holy smokes. Oh, boy. Yeah, that was good stuff. Hilarious. Yeah, that shit. That shit was pretty good. And then those rubber dongs. Oh, my God. Those are the that biggest was, uh, dildos I've ever seen in my life. I, I would I've not s- want to see the person that can take take that yeah i've seen some big dildos too but i think those are the biggest i've ever seen in my fucking life those things were huge and he had suction cups on him so they you know (laughs) there's there's a jackass thing i don't know if it was like a behind the scenes where johnny knoxville has one and he's like kind of acting like a gunslinger he has it in his pocket and he throws it at the wall and it sticks perfectly on the wall that's the first thing but that that thing's like half the size of those and i thought that one that johnny knoxville had was big this one's like they're like legit weapons those are like registered lethal weapons, those things. Like, holy shit. So huge. I was not expecting that many uh, phallic objects in this movie from the previews. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, and the fingers were just flat out gross. So funny. The they, hot dog when they introduced the oh. mustard. I'm like, I can't, I can't. Oh my God, that was crazy. And they're like, um, in that universe, they're like primates. They have to use their feet for things. <laughs> She's yeah. like playing the piano with her feet and stuff. I thought that was pretty funny. Do you see her hand brace on her foot? Oh, oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> She's got a leg, uh, ankle brace too. So funny. Yeah. I like how they did a shout out to, um, was it 2001 A Space Odyssey? That was funny too. It's like they're killing off all the regular handed uh, primates or whatever. (laughs) That was pretty funny. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That was very, very, so uh, very silly, funny reference. But I think that hallway scene with the daughter being first introduced as the bad guy and she starts doing like, I think she turned one guy into glitter. Yeah. Um, Yeah, Confetti or something. Yeah. 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 Scary guys, yeah. It was such a good sequence because um, they also used squibs too to like show right. people getting shot up. Right. Oh my god, those slow mo squib are, shots. Yeah, I love squibs my are the squibs. best. And then, oh yeah, she started beating the crap out of somebody with those dildos, like you just brought mm-hmm. up. Like what? Um, I also thought that um, I think it's called the everything bagel that she was trying to create. That was a really interesting way that they did that. Yeah. Um. Nothing really matters in life. Right. I guess she realized because she can just travel anywhere between dimensions. And she wanted her mom to understand that. That was really interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Interesting visuals, too, how they put it between her hands. <laughs> yeah. I want to show you something. It's, I remember doing that with kids, like, in elementary school, that thing. I was like, what does that look like? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember doing that when I was, like, eight or nine. Yeah. That was funny. That that place that she's from, where she's building the everything bagel, that was kind of cool too. Um, it's like an all white palace, yeah, of the future almost. They all have the bagels on their foreheads, or like a dark circle on their foreheads, mm-hmm. like they're yeah. a cult or something. Or cult. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're not, it'll make you laugh, it'll make you cry. Um, there at the end, when she finally figured her husband out, and so when she went through, you know, when she went up those stairs, you know, and she's quote fighting everybody and then she's making them giving them what they want you know and and making their life better and making them happy and that kind of stuff instead of you know ripping their head off i you know i mean that that sequence sticks with me too because it's like god you know it it took all of this in order for you to wake up Mm -hmm. you know and just i don't know it, it's frustrating on one hand and then the other hand it's like well you know life's a journey i guess and she took a pretty rough one yeah yeah she got it figured out yeah that ending sequence too on the staircase um the two daniels the directors they made their cameos right there i think one got thrown into the vortex so his face starts ripping apart and then the other guy uh he was the one who was really into the dominatrix <laughs> so she the main character grabs him on the stairs and starts spanking him <laughs> from the be nice. Yeah, that was funny. <clears throat> that was cool seeing those guys. In there. Yeah, yeah, that was interesting good. cameo. <laughs> Making yeah. yourself a hey, Tom and Hanks kind of guy. Yeah. Like we were talking about, it's always fun seeing director cameos. <laughs> yeah, 
it was really cool too how she could um if she gets herself into a situation like when she was in a situation where she needed to fight and she wasn't she didn't have that so she went back to that dimension came back you know and brought the I skills back hung on to whatever it was that she needed in order to go to that dimension and come back you know as long i guess as long as she kept that which one of the funnier ones that me and ian kept cracking up at was the um, ratatouille dimension. yes raccoon raccoon that was so funny that was hilarious they take him they they put the raccoon in a cage and they're driving away and the guy's like no <laughs> my raccoon <laughs> So then she starts controlling him. Uh, yeah. And then vice versa, right? Doesn't he control her at one point too? Like yeah. that shit was so funny, man. That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was one of the best jokes. It's such a ridiculous movie. Like who's all like, you know what? I'm going to put a Ratatouille reference in here. <laughs> right? and it's a raccoon this time. Yeah. Yeah. And they're chefs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big old chef hat. Yeah. Oh my God. It's, it's such an interesting I don't know yeah. what to even call it. Yeah. <laughs> their their type of um humor maybe or it, storytelling the it, Daniels. Yeah, it's very it's definitely distinct. Cuz they're expressing pretty heavy topics. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like family. Yeah, and the whole um coming to terms with uh the daughter being uh you know homosexual. Yeah. yeah. Divorces involved. And that too. Yeah. Um even like the way that um, parents affect their children um, in life and how grandfathers can affect their children and right. how it's kind of passed generationally. Right, yeah. Um, maybe generational trauma is a good word. Mm-hmm. But addressing all of those in such a beautiful way, in a clever way, um, interdimensional travel and yeah. um, kung fu, uh, it's it's really awesome. And through humor, adding humor in there. So it's like fun to experience these kind of things or yeah. try to um go through these ideas or stories i read online um you you there's not a lot out there as far as movies concerned um of course it just it was just released um but one thing i read was when her daughter when she backed into the forest and her daughter um followed her in and then all of those weapons cycled through her hand remember yeah. that yeah one of those weapons was an Oscar. I saw. Oh, that. I, I didn't notice that. that. That's yeah. hilarious. I um, I I looked and I That's saw funny. like a gold flash, but I didn't actually see it very well. So, I'm sure that when it comes out, you know, we'll crank it down to you know quarter speed and yeah, eighth. That's speed cool. I I did not see. notice that. That's really cool. Yeah. That's nice. the thing too is there's a lot of those like even when she's teleporting through all of her interdimensional selves. There's a lot of different ones. I think I saw her as like a monster in one of the dimensions. Or like an anime version of her. There's an anime yeah, version of her. So yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be really fun, like yes. Mark says, when we can get the DVD yes. and like hit pause on all of that. Definitely. Oh, I can't yeah, wait. Yeah, because there was a good, what, 10, 20 second sequence there where they were cycling through all of her. Yeah. And then she just ends up as a rock. That was, yeah, that was <laughs> yeah. funny. Just dead silence. Just... What an interesting thing to do in the yeah, middle of your I movie. Know. Just yeah. stop the entire movie. You've, you've seen everything in this movie yeah. and now we're just gonna stop it for you right that, here I, that i i kind of like the concept of that universe it's like like um she's saying how uh life just is non-existent <laughs> and, I, and I, I don't know what they mean by i guess like you know organic life yeah i guess rocks technically aren't life they're formations yeah i guess um and she's like yeah you know actually most universes are actually this i was like that, that's actually a really interesting concept yeah. Like for whatever reason, just life kind of tends to wipe itself out, and most universes are just lifeless. I was like, that's actually really interesting, very interesting concept. Really interesting. Just stop your loud, action-packed comedy, it's and then just dead go, silence. Yeah. Like, look, guys, like zoom out for a second, and what if we were just rocks chilling out? Ooh, so cool. And they did it in a humorous way. Yeah. Uh, it's just the mother and daughter rocks talking with, with to each the, other. The text, yeah. yeah cracking jokes. Text, and, yeah, yeah. And they crack a joke as rocks and right. the audience react. We were yeah. all laughing. Yeah, yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. How do you do that? Yeah, I know. That was good. That's ambitious yeah. for yeah. for a movie. Yes. So cool. Yeah. And then the rock eventually turns around and is wearing googly eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. the googly eyes, I'm trying to figure those out. I think that was the husband's thing. 
Yeah, he was like putting googly eyes on the party decorations or on uh, customers' clothing. Oh, right, is he doing yeah. that? I think she, so. she was oh, okay. coming across him in the beginning. Oh, she, that's right. Okay, that's right. Yeah, 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 that's right. I don't know what that says about the husband. He likes a little humor. Maybe, in yeah. His life, could I guess. Be. Yeah, and he's just kind of just bopping through life, you know, just yeah. having fun. and Yeah. And I guess at the beginning, more at the beginning, she didn't really have time for it. That's why she was like, I told you to stop putting googly eyes all over the place. And she would rip them off and get rid of them real quick. Do you remember um, she's going to get Jenny Slate's clothes? And uh, she's like, well, I, yeah, I think she called her big nose. I know. Right? Poor Jenny Slate. <laughs> I know. Um, anyway. Uh She's like, where, where'd it go? He's like, oh, I put it in, uh, he put it in their living quarters. He's like, yeah, the glows are happier over there. Yeah, they're I thought happier that was upstairs. Funny. Yeah. So interesting. I thought that was funny. Yeah. Funny reasoning. And I mentioned Jackie Chan earlier. Jackie Chan was slated to be the lead in this. Whoa. Yeah. And um, the key, directors key, decided to go. The, the husband role? Or, it uh, just said main character. Oh, wow. No, okay. it, no, not the husband, because then they decided to go with a female lead. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. he was Michelle. Oh, okay. I can totally see Jackie Chan being in that Definitely. Movie. It would be cool to see Jackie Chan in a movie again. I feel like it's been a while since he's been in something. But I also like exploring the mother-daughter relationship, Same. And, yeah. yeah, I mean, kind I like unique. Michelle Yeoh a lot, too. Yeah. So it worked out. And he's out. getting old enough now. He could be almost their dad. Oh, he, yeah. He been... Yeah, Jackie Chan's getting up there. I don't think that that would have worked. Yeah, true. James Hong didn't have too much to do in this movie, but I think that he still did great. Oh, I thought he was great. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he did a great job. He was funny. Oh, and also, cool yeah, also badass at times, too. Yeah. For, you know, being an old man. Yeah. I liked his, like, robot costume at the end. He, like, yeah. transformed his yeah. wheelchair into an yeah. Optimus Prime that, type that, deal. That was good, yeah. Well, one thing you you got Matrix vibes, and I definitely specifically when they're in the elevator, and he's like, you know, all right, you're gonna go outside. There's gonna be a janitor closet to the right. We're gonna go over there, and like she has instructions. It just reminded me totally of uh, when Thomas Anderson gets the phone, and Mor- Morpheus is directing him around the office. Yeah, I definitely, yeah, definitely got Matrix vibes from that for sure. Well, and then I think he's from Universe A, and he's hanging out alpha, in the back of yeah, the van. Yeah, Alpha, Alpha Universe, or whatever, Alpha yeah. Verse, whatever they called it. Which is kind of like being back in the uh, real world in Matrix, and he's like trying to talk to her through the computer. Right. And like, Bring her up. Oh no, we lost her. We lost. Her. We got to find track right. her down again. Right. Really cool to see like Matrix references in there too. Yeah. Matrix, two thousand one, Space Odyssey, <laughs> yeah. a lot of classic kung fu films. And, and I like and <clears throat> we mentioned. I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis said, you know, she she can do almost no wrong, and she was keeping up with these guys. Yeah, very she cool. did a really good job. Yeah, yeah, she did a really good job. She acted well. I don't know how much fighting she did, but you know, they did. She did enough to the point where it looked like she was. I'm sure they probably did some added effects, like maybe put her face on a stunt double or something. But I don't know. I bought it. It didn't take me out of the movie. I, I actually thought a lot of the time it was her. So I was cracking up seeing Jamie Lee Curtis yeah, fight as yeah, a tax auditor. Yeah, it was hilarious. Yep. The stairwell scene when she's uh, first like attacking them, uh, Michelle Yo she finally uh, figures out how to fight and is able to actually throw her down the stairs. Yeah, and she lands with her head just directly right. Into the that was that was good. It's yeah, good. yeah, that was that so was, funny. That was pretty good. I think my favorite scene. I was thinking about it on the way over here, and man, it's tough. I I think my, I think the the one that sticks with me the most is um, there toward the end when he is sweeping up the glass. Um, because it shows that everything they've been through, you know, not to mention the divorce papers and all that kind of stuff, and he is still, you know, a a good person, yeah. a good man. Yeah, you know, it's just it's. Yeah, I think that that hit me the most in the feels, if you want yeah. to say. Yeah, 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 definitely the one that's going to stick with me. I think for sure. Anything else? And I think they were talking in the van earlier in the film too, and he was explaining. Uh, oh, she said, "Oh, your brother gets a divorce, so now you think it's just okay." And he said, "No, I. It's more of like I never have your attention, so I need to do something like major." And yeah. then maybe you'll pay attention to me, and maybe you'll understand what I really need and yeah. want. Oh man! Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. 
Ooh, yeah. hello, Daniels. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and and for, uh, you know, all this, the effects it has and the deepness of the plot and that kind of stuff, it's that stuff there, the little, I don't know, the, the little stuff on the outside, maybe, that, you know, really hits you. Yeah, you know? I agree. Yeah. Oh, my favorite scene? scene? Probably the dicks. Yeah, I the love dicks. the dicks. The I dicks. called it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, which part of the dicks? The part where she's beating oh. the shit out of the security guards or the cops or? Um, probably the um, sticking it up their ass. It's <laughs> probably my favorite part. Um, I do really like some of the um, really like I I uh, I I always thought his name was Ki Hai Kwan. I remember watching like behind the scenes stuff of Temple of Doom, and I, it sounded like that's how they said his name. Um, his his character's name is Raymond. Was that what Wayne, it was? Yeah, Wayne yeah. Wayne. Um, I thought everything with him was great. I thought you know he and Michelle Yeoh had really great chemistry with a uh, husband and wife, and he really um, you know, had some really just really good acting. Mm-hmm. And I was it was happy to I was happy to see that you know it was really awesome to see you know a person I grew up watching in the movies I mentioned before still you know in 2022 do a really great performance as an adult yeah. that's the thing too it's like you know i watched him as like a 10 year old 12 year old kid when i was about eight nine or even younger and you know to see him now as an adult where i'm more of an adult it's just kind of cool but like you're saying yeah. uh kwan's like ability to act like he's going from the soft cuddly version with wearing glasses and yeah then he takes him off and he's immediately he's a the badass, badass again. i thought that was great yeah so cool yeah really good acting yeah i wonder if he did a lot of his uh, martial arts himself or probably a stunt double i don't know maybe again oh, there was that part really where he's using his fanny pack to beat the shit out of the guards and I think it's right when he takes the um, fishbowl rocks out. Yeah, and stuff, so yeah, yeah. Um, he hits the first guard, and the guard comically flies over right. the, um, the cubicles. Yeah. And then uh, it zooms back in on the other one, and the other guy goes, Michael, oh, fuck. Yeah, and then he gets hit. <laughs> yeah that was a good scene. <laughs> good that was funny. Sneaks of humor. In yeah, there exactly. Like, this is just a security guard. He's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's like just trying to take take these guys down and the right. whole thing's getting his ass beat. Yeah. When he <laughs> takes a fanny pack off and he lets it out all the way. Yeah. Yeah. He just, he just looks yeah. Like a badass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was such a nerdy thing, you know, like, yeah, it was very funny. Well, thanks for watching this one with me guys. Yeah. Guys Again, rock. thank you very much for, um, going to the theater with me. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Should I talk about more, Mor- uh, what is it? Morpheus, Morpheus. Should I tell that little story real quick? Please. Um, I went to piss while you guys were uh, watching, you know, we were staying behind if the credits were happening. And before I go, Morbius is playing right next to us. And I walk in and I'm trying to be all discreet, you know, try not to disturb the audience. I'm, I'm, I'm in the back and I'm watching the movie. And then I realize, wait a minute, I don't think there's anyone in here watching the movie. And it's already probably like an hour, hour and a half into the movie. So I go and piss and I meet up with you guys. And I'm like, let's go, let's go take a look at Morbius. And I'm like, I don't think there's anyone in here. There was <laughs> so not. we got to watch the very last scene and end, end credit sequences of Morbius. I cheered when uh, the title came up again for the end. Morbius. Yeah, you, you woke up the projectionist. They were taking a nap. They're like, <laughs> whoa, are there people in here? What? <laughs> people actually watching this? What? <laughs> Sad. Yeah. Sorry, Morbius. Yeah. There's a decent amount of people for everything, everywhere, all at once. So. Yeah, it wasn't, mm-hmm. it wasn't. I'm glad anything. that this movie's making some money instead of... Uh, I don't have anything against Morbius, but at the same time, I would rather have something as unique as this make money than just another Marvel property. And let us know if you actually watched Morbius. Yeah, and that too. Go go comment on the Morbius video too. We oh, have yeah, a Morbius. We did a we, on yeah, Morbius, go yeah. yeah. Let us know what you thought of it there. But um, yeah, thank you, Carlos, for bringing us to the theater. It's always great to get out to the theater. Yeah, yes, thank you very much. It's yeah. awesome. And thanks for listening to this review. Uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, let us know what you thought about this movie. If you did get yes, a chance please. to go see it, we highly recommend you see it. And uh, until next time, guys. Later. Yeah, later. later.